Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a picture of the pursuit. Sammy, hurry this up. It's going to kill somebody. We got them. We got them. They're down in the ditch. Look around. He's wrecked. He's wrecked. No matter where you are, at any second, it could happen to you. Because desperate criminals use desperate measures. No matter who gets in the way. For the next 60 minutes, you'll get a close-up view of what officers see every day. You'll ride shotgun in the most terrifying chases on the road. You'll feel the heat of the most explosive acts of criminal insanity ever captured on tape. Much of this footage has never been viewed by the public. Police and news agencies send us their most shocking videos. He's got a gun, he's got a gun. So that you can know what they know. That to let your guard down, even for an instant, Get in and could mean disaster. He's gonna run the red light, he's gonna run it. So crank up your TV and don't turn away because real life happens in the blink of an eye. Shut your truck off. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. It starts with cops and robbers and generally ends with somebody going to jail. But in between are those terrifying moments when you have robbers on the run. So sit back. We're going to show you the crooks, the crimes, and the chases that followed, because we don't want you to become the next victim. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's rush hour, and the freeway is clogged with traffic. Commuters will be late for work today. Police have set up a roadblock to catch some early morning crooks. Two car thieves have each stolen a brand new Mercedes Benz. Two fast and finely crafted precision machines. As the cars approach, an officer throws out a spike strip. They just threw down a spike strip. But the driver in the tan Mercedes sees it. He cuts into traffic and around the strip, almost hitting two officers. One officer runs out of the way, just in time. The other officer tries to shoot out the suspect's tires, but the car is moving too fast, and the officer wisely backs away. Whoa, he just missed hitting that officer. That was close. Police aren't done yet. Up ahead is another unit with a spike strip already down. But this slick thief knows what to do. He swerves around again and nearly hits another officer standing by the median. The officer jumped out of the way at just the right time. The other car thief wasn't so lucky. He made a bad turn at the roadblock, right into the hands of police. The first thief has an empty freeway ahead. With the police now far behind him, he really opens it up. He's really moving now, well over 100 miles an hour. But the officers are soon back on his tail. Pushing the Mercedes even faster, the freewheeling hooligan somehow finds time to make a phone call. I don't believe it. I think he's talking on a cell phone. If we could just get a little closer. He is. He's talking on the phone. Do you believe this guy? Police discovered later that the suspect called a girlfriend to brag about the chase. Distracted by the conversation, this renegade Casanova makes a big mistake. He turns off the freeway right onto a toll road jammed by rush hour motorists. OK, he's turned off right into a toll booth. He's not going anywhere. With nowhere to turn, the man bails out of the stolen Mercedes. He hits the ground running. Amazingly, he never stops talking to his girlfriend. Suspect running. He's running now, and he's still talking on that cell phone. This guy is unbelievable. Running aimlessly in and out of cars, he has nowhere to go but insists on telling his girlfriend every detail. Distracted by his phone call, he doesn't notice a plainclothes cop chasing him down until the last second. Police are on him. They're chasing him through the toll, but he's still talking. He's paying no attention. I don't even think he sees them. Suddenly, he turns and sees the officer's gun pointed right in his face. He gives up, but still continues to talk on the phone as he lies on the ground. The officer's moved in, he's got him pinned. I do believe the suspect is no longer talking on the phone, 
Other officers now moving in position. Police have taken this guy's phone privileges away. He's definitely grounded. This smooth operator's days of stealing cars and running from police are over. This car thief got a rush running from police and putting people's lives at risk. He's really moving now, well over 100 miles an hour. Even called a girlfriend to boast. He's running away from the police officers while talking on his cell phone. He has nothing to brag about anymore. From now on, he'll have to use a payphone in the county jail. Thornton, Colorado. A customer wearing his shirt like this can only mean trouble. This master of disguise is not here to shop. Instead, he pins the elderly store clerk to the floor just off camera. The robber orders the man to open the register. The cool-headed clerk pretends to comply. But the savvy old storekeeper grabs a knife and lunges toward his attacker. The would-be robber runs in circles to avoid the onslaught. The clerk knows that the safest place is outside, and he slips through the front door. The suspect rushes to the cash register, but it's locked up tight. When the crook tries to make a hasty escape, he discovers the clerk has locked him inside. The frantic suspect squeezes through an open window. He gets away, for now. But two weeks later, he's caught during another bungled robbery attempt. Like all robbers, this guy thought he was the one in control. But a clerk in his own store has the home field advantage. And this rookie thief found that out the hard way. High-speed pursuits are dangerous in their own right. But if you add in a nasty rainstorm, the risk just goes up. And that's not just for police. That's for anyone on the road. Springfield, Florida. The police are in hot pursuit of a stolen car. 98. Just turn north on 98. In the wake of a summer rain, the streets are slick with water. 410 Springfield to any seat of road unit. What to do with this road traffic, this road condition? But this car thief doesn't care about dangerous roads. He charges headlong through a residential district. Even family pets have to scatter for cover. He is westbound on 11th Street. Westbound on 11th. One cruiser veers off to get ahead of the chase. Officer Arthur Bozeman takes over the lead. Go, 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 go. Street and East Avenue. Bozeman shadows the suspect and radios their position to other units. Back on Sherman Avenue heading towards this Avenue. We're on Sherman Avenue, going back toward 15th Street. Weaving in and out of oncoming traffic, this guy runs with no fear. Suddenly, the leapfrogging unit appears directly in front of him. But the suspect proves to be even more slippery than the road itself. He dodges the roadblock, then cuts off some hapless motorists. The cocky driver then barrels straight toward a red light. He goes for it. He sees the other car too late. His brakes lock, sending him sliding out of control. Incredibly, the battered probe still has life, and the suspect doesn't hesitate to hit the gas. It's obvious he's willing to sacrifice his stolen ride and anything else in his way for a shot at freedom. JT, we're Sherman and Knight. Officer Bozeman knows he has to do something before it's too late. But suddenly, things get a lot more complicated. A fresh rain beats down on Bozeman's windshield. With it this hard for him to see, the suspect has a real chance of getting away. Bozeman calls for permission to spin him out. Road traffic, advise 401, and if he can advise, uh, giving us the authority to ram him off the road. What you have to do to stop him? Get forward. Thank you, Chief. Take him out. It's all Bozeman needed to hear. He closes in. Before he can make his move, Mother Nature sets a trap of her own. 
Having maneuvered through treacherous conditions all day, this guy hits one puddle he can't handle. The slick culprit's day of running is finally over, and he'll have plenty of time to dry off in jail. This car he thought he could outrun not just the law, but also a vicious rainstorm. He tried every trick in the book he knew to get away. But in the end, he forgot one thing. It's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. Next, on police videos, the robbers get cocky. Get the money out now! A car thief fresh out of prison in, in. taunts police to catch him again. Going back down toward the city. And a gang back for the third time finds a very different score. Plus, an epic pursuit that will leave you breathless. When shoplifters on the lamb try to leave cops on the skids. Next. When a convict gets released from prison, you'd think they'd savor their freedom and would do everything they could so they wouldn't get put back behind bars. But unfortunately, what we see is they go right back to being crooks, and then they wind up right back in jail. Spartanburg, South Carolina. The deranged man fresh out of jail for stealing a car has just done it again. Farmer, we trying to get him to stop now. He doesn't wait long to show police he has no intention of going back to prison. Tearing through a yard, the suspect turns the stolen truck around 180 degrees. Turn around, Farmer. Going back down toward the city. Pursuing officer Randy Hollyfield does his best to keep up. Firm behind him, trying to get him to stop. When the road ahead becomes blocked, the suspect recklessly hops the curb. Going through the field here. He rolls back onto the road through a roadside. He's 10 and 50, Farmer, 10 and 50. But it doesn't slow him down for a second. Yo, we going on through, Farmer. Suddenly, he slams on the brakes, trying to force Hollyfield into a rear end collision. It doesn't work. And the same is Farmer. As backup joins the chase, he tries again. This time, throwing it in reverse. Just hit one of my units, Spartanburg. He just hit me, Spartanburg. Officers now fear the man's main objective is not simply to get away, but to raise as much hell as possible. Coming back towards Howard Street. Coming back towards Howard Street. Their suspicions are confirmed when once again, the madman charges backwards. Go ahead. Go ahead. This time, Hollifield is prepared for the suspect's attacks. Then, in an act of complete lunacy, the driver actually taunts police to come and get him. Officers move in, and the suspect hits the gas. He's hit two of our units. The chase is back on. But it's about to get even more serious than ever. The suspect rolls into an occupied school zone. Tires squeal as he shifts gears threatening to run right into the school. Luckily, he stops before anyone gets hurt. The police aren't going to give this guy another chance to do harm. Alpha one, be advised, he backed up and hit one of our officers, and unit's probably down. Officers know if they can get him into a confined area, they can easily outnumber and corner him. They don't have to wait long. This man tried everything to keep from going back to prison. He's 10 and 50, Farmer, 10 and 50. But he forgot to try the one thing that would have guaranteed his freedom. Just hit one of my units, Farmer. Obeying the law. Police will sometimes moonlight to provide security for people in need. But no matter where they're working, an officer's instincts are never off duty. Shreveport, Louisiana. The three men in line at this convenience store are suspected of robbing it twice before. 
and they're ready to strike again. After the customer carries her grocery bag away, the men pretend to stroll off too. But they're really making sure the coast is clear. Once they're certain, they don't hesitate. The first two robbers storm the counter, brandishing guns. Stay down, stay down. The third crook pushes past a startled worker to get to the safe in the back room. The robber in the jacket then runs toward the back room too. But off camera, as the first crook hits the safe, he's met by an off-duty policeman. The moonlighting officer has been watching the robbery on a video monitor. The unseen confrontation between him and the armed robber explodes into a firefight. The crook at the front fires back. As the crook in the jacket and the terrified worker race for cover, it takes slow motion to understand everything that happens in this hail of bullets. As one of the robbers forces his way into the back room, the first gunman demands the cash from the register. In the back room, the armed robber confronts the off-duty cop, only to be shot twice. Turning to run, the thug at the counter fires randomly, pulverizing a beverage display and narrowly missing the second clerk. With one crook down, the other two run away. The officer follows moments later. In the parking lot, the robbers shoot at the policeman, but he escapes injury. When the officer returns, he's able to keep his cool, despite having just survived two shootouts. I got a suspect down here for I need, I need some hope. Okay. Only minutes later, the gunmen are caught. This armed robbery will be their last. These crooks thought this store was the place for easy money. Stay down, stay down. But thanks to an off-duty policeman, they soon learned that nothing comes free. Give it away. Two of them paid for this botched holdup with stiff prison sentences. And the third paid with his life. Coming up. Right through the red light. On police videos. They could be the perfect robbery. I'm gonna break. Except for one missing piece. Well, now he's turned around, he's going back. A getaway plan. Southbound. Westbound right now. When they don't know where to go. Northbound. Northbound. There's no telling what they'll do. Take Teenagers on the run. It's bad enough that kids are out committing crimes, and all too often they're not doing it for the money. They're doing it simply for kicks. San Juan County, New Mexico. A squad of deputies pursues two young lovers in a stolen car. The officers have seen this kind of thing before. A guy tries to impress his girlfriend by stealing a car and taking her on a joyride. These two joyriders have been chased all the way from Arizona. Now they're blazing a trail across the New Mexican desert. The reckless driver makes foolhardy moves like blowing a red light at 100 miles an hour. Meanwhile, units up ahead get in position to deploy spike strip. The suspects are going so fast, they fly by the first deputy before he can even position the spikes. Units up ahead hear the alert and scramble to get their spikes laid down in time. The next batch of spikes is waiting just over this hill. But the driver spots them in time and swerves around them. Around the corner, deputies set up their final battery of spikes. The teen juggernaut makes it by these, Officers will have to resort to far more dangerous tactics. Even after losing a tire, the driver keeps the crippled car moving at 90 miles an hour. But the overtaxed engine can only take so much. Looks like they've come to a stop. The teens hit the light post and bail out. And officers are surprised to learn that the speed demon behind the wheel was actually the girlfriend. Both juveniles are apprehended within minutes. 
This teeny bopper has shown that theft and evasion aren't just a boy's game. She may believe in equal opportunity crime, but now she'll be facing equal opportunity punishment. Phoenix, Arizona. Just minutes ago, the man on this motorcycle robbed a federal credit union. Subject wearing a fa facial hair and a wig in her uh, first federal credit union. Apparently, he thought a phony beard was all he would need to make a smooth getaway. He has been all over the South Valley. But no dime store disguise is going to fool the Phoenix PD. 45, I now have to pursue southbound. I'm sure he must realize that he's being followed. The suspect approaches a stoplight. Cross traffic zooms through the intersection. But the desperate man doesn't even hesitate. The robber has a sizable lead and an open road ahead. You can see him just blow right by that shuttle van right now. But he makes a foolish turn into Sky Harbor Airport. Through Terminal 1, we're still eastbound. And promptly gets lost. Well, now he's turned around, he's going back. This thief doesn't know which way to go. He races in one direction, then he races in another. And he's now westbound in the eastbound lanes. All in all, he gets nowhere. Finally, the suspect decides there's only one way out of this mess. Look at that. Back the way he came. But at the end of this ramp, waits a big surprise. Dozens of officers surround the suspect. He's really slowing up through here. He does the only sensible thing he's done all day. He gives up. It's hard to believe a man who put so much thought into his brilliant disguise. Facial hair and a wig. Would forget all about planning an escape route. Through Terminal 1, we're still eastbound. Now the only ride this guy will be taking. He's going back. Is a one-way trip to jail. Still to come. Captain Three, I'm gonna start shooting. On police video. It's time for the brutal consequences. When all the tough talk and all the slick moves blow up in the criminal's face. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. A crime scene attracts a lot of attention. When citizens interfere with workers who need to be there, a small audience can turn into big trouble. Birmingham, Alabama. A 14-year-old girl is injured in a gang-related shooting. News of the incident spreads quickly. As police arrive, everyone starts showing up. But when cameras appear, everyone starts showing off. Many of the neighbors crowd around the news crew, anxious to have their faces on television. Paramedics struggle to get through the masses. The girl is not seriously injured, but extremely shaken. While medics tend to the victim, police learned what happened. A man from the crowd claims the girl is an active member of a gang called the Disciples, and that she was shot by a rival. Yeah, she, no, she was a disciple queen. No, the cyber, then they got the cyber queen. It's a critical situation that no one is taking seriously. One daring bystander even steals an officer's hat. But police can't be too concerned with foolish rabble rousers. They escort the wounded girl to the hospital. Now, the news crew is left alone with the raucous gathering. And not everyone is so happy to have their neighborhood's politics revealed on television. No longer under officers' watchful eyes, the crowd erupts. They quickly swarm around the battling men, but these are not just passive onlookers. As soon as the opportunity arises, they attack the weakest of the fighters. A man from the community struggles to break things up. The brawl is over, but the danger is not. Now certain members of the crowd agree that being in the spotlight isn't such a good idea. When a crime unfolds, people naturally want to investigate. But when onlookers decide that looking isn't enough, 
They shouldn't be surprised if they're the ones who end up on the 6 o'clock news. Port Wentworth, Georgia. Officers from two counties pursue a man who has just robbed a convenience store at gunpoint. Armed robbery just occurred. Armed robbery just occurred. He has also stolen the clerk's car. The suspect knows he has nothing to lose. Officers prepare for the worst. We knew he was armed, so one of the first things that was going through our mind is whether or not he's going to open fire upon police officers, either during the pursuit or at the end of the pursuit. In adrenaline-fueled desperation, the armed robber burns up the road to Savannah at 100 miles per hour. But these officers have the edge. Vehicles designed for pursuit and years of experience. The primary unit skillfully darts ahead. The hard-driving bandit begins to feel the pressure. Watch out now, And soon makes a deadly mistake. The suspect loses control, mowing over a road sign in the median. In a split second, the overheating vehicle stalls and the chase comes to a skidding halt. Officers seize the moment. They swarm in, weapons drawn, and show the armed thug that this hot pursuit is over. But the worst is yet to come. In the rush of the arrest, nobody notices the smoke pouring from under the hood. What the officers don't realize is that the toppled road sign severed the fuel line as the car passed over it. Now, gasoline is spilling all over the pavement and the already overheated engine. Go now! Get on the ground! On the ground! You think everything's calm? You have the pursuit ended, you have the suspect arrested, and the next thing you know, the entire area suddenly turned into an inferno. In an instant, the temperature shoots above 400 degrees. Reacting quickly, the officers drop everything and drag the handcuffed suspect to safety. The area gets so hot, the suspect's ball cap spontaneously bursts into flames. Within seconds, it becomes very clear. Had the officers not pulled the suspect out of the vehicle, his stolen getaway car would have become a fiery death trap. Officers in Port Wentworth, Georgia, have seen their share of high-speed pursuits. Armed robbery just occurred. But their training and experience has also taught them that anything can happen at any time. Red Red, 39. Sometimes we get lucky. We don't mind any help we can get. And as long as it's an innocent street sign, hey, we'll put another one up tomorrow. This time, this armed robber was lucky to have the Port Wentworth Police Department on his side. He'll be spending quite a few years behind bars, but he owes the Port Wentworth Police his life. A convenience store clerk can be a great judge of human character. They meet all kinds of people, from your friendly neighbor to customers that are just plain wacko. War Acres, Oklahoma. Most of the time, the night shift at a convenience store is pretty uneventful. But this rubbernecking customer has more than just a six pack on his mind. Remember, there are two things a crook wants most, fast money and a clear shot to the exit. This guy is so paranoid, it's a wonder he doesn't get whiplash. Finally, he makes his move. The clerk is stunned. It almost sounds like a joke. I ain't kidding. I'm gonna shoot this place up. Give me the money now, right now. I'm gonna count to three. And I'm gonna start shooting. One, two. The situation becomes tense. The thief claims to have a gun, and whether he has one or not, he knows that if he's caught, he's going to jail. Hurry up. I ain't playing. I ain't got nothing to lose. But when the clerk punches nervously at the register, it promptly jams shut. Okay, okay, one second, one second. This makes the impatient thug even more volatile. Hurry up! Right now! Hurry up! I mean it! I'm gonna blast you! 
It may be an empty threat, but a desperate man is still a dangerous man. And the clerk decides he doesn't want to fight. Don't hit, uh, hit me. Whatever you want, you take it, man. Get the money out now. Whatever you want, you take it, man. Money at now. The impulsive thief even swipes a pack of smokes and paws at the register himself. He's so distracted, he doesn't notice as the clerk trips the silent alarm. But the impatient suspect knows his time is running out. Turn it on like it's supposed to be. You better hurry, too. By now, the clerk and the crook just want the same thing, for the crook to leave. I ain't playing. I don't want to hurt you. It ain't worth your so the clerk makes him an offer he can't refuse. It's easy money, but he'll have to take it the hard way. He drags a heavy cash register off the counter, then tries to crack it open on the floor, crashing the whole store in the process. The bungling robber even tries to hide the bulky machine under his shirt as he finally runs away. But he won't get far. The suspect was picked up at his own home only a week after this video played on the local news. But as dumb as this bluff appears on tape, the clerk did the smart thing. He remained calm, avoided a confrontation, and simply convinced the trash-talking suspect to leave. And this crook soon learned that what looked like easy money was just a quick stop on the way to 15 years in state prison. Coming up on Police Video, the most knocked down, drag out, exhausting chase Passengers taking our shirt off. we've ever shown. When two shoplifters on a rampage there he comes. send three units from two jurisdictions through 40 minutes of pure mayhem. Next. Unless you've actually been in a pursuit, there is no way to understand the incredible exhaustion that an officer will begin to experience in any high-speed chase. Aurora, Ohio. It begins as a simple shoplifting call from a men's clothing outlet. When Officer Jeff Bugara arrived at the store, this late model pickup tore out of the parking lot like a bat out of hell. It's a one male black driver, one female passenger. One thing is clear right from the start. The driver of this truck is willing to do whatever it takes not to get caught. 43 Pioneer. The next thing that's clear is that other drivers had better beware. That's when Officer Begara gets another interesting piece of news. The car was on the hot list. Not exactly a big surprise. We're approaching 43 pistol. Copy. All right, we're southbound on pistol. Copy, we have a unit on I-480. This is a dangerous road to be going this fast. They're not paying any attention to the bicycle on the right, and they're sure not slowing down for the cars and motorcycles on the left. But the chase gets really intense when they barrel into this busy two-lane construction zone. We're, we're passing country wood right now. The pickup is built to roll over the ruts and rubble of construction sites and never even upset the driver's coffee. But Officer Begara's Crown Vic is built for highway pursuits. This could be a big disadvantage. Passengers taking her shirt off or just remove some item of clothing from her. The officer realizes that the passenger is desperately trying to get rid of the shoplifting evidence. A coat worth less than $100. But around the next corner, they're going to find out just how truly desperate these two are willing to be. When innocent people don't move fast enough, this pickup is willing to crank up the speed and crowd them all off the road. Another officer races in, rapidly catching up from behind. Copy. The reckless pickup starts passing on blind curves, turning this narrow road into a potential death trap. 
This high-flying couple just came insanely close to killing someone. But as they skid around the next corner, they come even closer. Cops need some help. And 10 minutes into this nerve-wrenching chase, Officer Begara is going to get the only break he'll get all day. Up ahead, fellow officer Tim Rose and his partner see the Chevy coming their way. Here he comes. They try to flag the truck down. Obviously, that isn't going to work. Tim quickly peels out, hoping he'll be fast enough to catch up. The good news is, Tim isn't driving an ordinary patrol car. He's driving the department's only SUV. And today, he's going to need it. Guessing that the pickup is headed out of town, Tim takes a shortcut and quickly catches up. With Jeff close behind, the truck is now blazing down the kind of road made for a pickup. We're going to be crossing the tracks in 10 seconds. But one false move in the police cruiser could spell disaster. By now, the adrenaline is beginning to wear off, and both drivers are getting very tired. But the suspects in the pickup are still willing to take big chances. They know they have to go somewhere the squad car can't follow. The truck tears into this curve, and then suddenly the driver swerves off the road. He scoots across a grassy lawn. He's headed for an open field, and at the edge of that field is a treacherous little embankment. Bugar tries to keep up, but the undercarriage of his car gets torn away. And that's where Officer Rose comes in. We'll come back in just a moment for the unbelievable conclusion of this exhausting chase. Next, on Police Video. When the chase goes back to the hard court, if you can get around, I'll do it. the battle-weary SUV yeah, I'll never keep up with him. has to call in reinforcements of his own. 621, 600. This chase is far from over. We return now to the chase, which has been in progress for over 30 minutes. Believe me, 30 minutes of high-speed driving through heavily congested streets and narrow, twisting roads, that'll give you a workout you won't soon forget. Two suspected shoplifters lead Officer Jeff Bugara on a brutal chase. Desperate to ditch the police cruiser, the pickup heads where no cruiser can follow. He sprints across this manicured lawn, headed for an open field. And at the edge of that field, there's an embankment. And that's where Officer Rose comes in. When the criminals started their mad dash, Tim was coming up behind in the SUV. And just as Jeff went out of commission, Tim's four-wheel drive took up the lead without missing a beat. Cross-country isn't working, so the desperate duo and the truck decide to try their luck again on hard pavement. This curve-pounding, teeth-rattling chase is far from over. Once they're on suburban streets, the pickup recklessly zooms ahead. They believe that on these roads, the powerful pickup can outrun the police SUV. Since this is no longer an off-road chase, Tim radios a car from another district. If you can get around over the field, do it. The cruiser takes the lead from the slower SUV. But now another problem. In the heat of the chase, the driver of the pickup doesn't realize that the brake pads on his truck are starting to liquefy. With almost no stopping power, he shoots over the curb into oncoming lane. But even that doesn't slow him down. He races on down the road, looking for some way, somehow, to shake loose of these cruisers. Turning onto this tree-lined street, he sees his chance and decides to go for broke. Copy. He blasts across the road and over the curb. 
This time, the squad car doesn't even try to follow, but the SUV does. Tim Rose stays right on his tail as he careens through yards and across a parking lot, trying frantically to find a way to get loose on the street. But when you're going this fast, small mistakes can lead to a big collision. That's why Tim's lights are flashing and his sirens are screaming warning motorists ahead. But when the suspected shoplifter comes up to pass a slow-moving truck, the confused motorist suddenly decides to pull to the left, directly in front of Officer Rose. This is exactly the kind of thing an officer doesn't need at this point in an exhausting pursuit. But the officer is still in for one more surprise. The suspects speed toward the next intersection, not realizing that although the light is green, the cars are holding because of the sirens. The crooks try to jam their way through. Then they try to ram their way through. Then suddenly, Officer Mills from the Streetsboro PD comes out of nowhere. And this chase is finished. Get out of the car! No more fight, no more run, no more resistance. And believe me, that's the smartest thing they could do because the officers have had just about enough of these two crooks. And they had had enough of this insane chase. Because the truth is, you rob and run in Aurora, Ohio. He's running the red light. That no matter how long it lasts, no matter how crazy it gets, you're going to end up in jail. There's no such thing as an easy score. It's a lesson that most crooks learn too late. For every criminal who wants to steal for a living, there's an officer earning his keep by chasing him down. So don't be fooled by the lure of fast money. Because every robber is a robber on the run.